why don't we go ahead and review Mac OS Ventura. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing macOS Ventura, which is currently in closed developer beta. If it helps you at all, please use the chapter markers tagged down below to skip to the sections that you care about most. Now, before I even get too far into this review, I have to acknowledge that yes, this is currently a beta, which means it is chock full of bugs and inconsistencies that may be cleared up or changed or even completely omitted by the final release of macOS Ventura this fall. It'll likely be released in September or just after September, maybe in October, depending on how Apple's development release cycle goes. But I do acknowledge that this is not the final form of macOS Ventura. Because of that, I will primarily be focusing on big features and enhancements rather than the stability and performance of the system. This will be a free update for users at no cost. You can download it from the Mac App Store and download it onto your Mac. This year though, Apple is increasing the system requirements, kicking off some older machines. But yes, this still will run on Intel Macs as well as Apple Silicon. So Apple has not kicked off Intel users quite yet. Intel users will still be able to appreciate and benefit from this upcoming release. I've been using macOS Ventura now for every day for roughly a week. And there's a lot of really nice things I love about Apple's new macOS 13 update. I think my favorite feature though is center stage. Center stage is a great way to multitask and jump between applications. I will say that I am an avid spaces user, basically making full screen apps and jumping between them all. I love doing it. I'll have a different space for work stuff, one for social stuff, a full, uh, full screen one for Final Cut Pro, and just jump between everything. But I'll often end up with a lot of spaces. Stage Manor seems to help out with that because it keeps all of those spaces in one space. So instead, I'll jump open to one app which will be centered right there in view. I can use it as I need, but at the same time, I'll have all my other open stages, I guess maybe you want to call them my other open apps, they're along the left hand side. And I can easily jump between what I'm currently working on and any of those other open apps. And multiple apps can be open at the same time in one of those little spaces or stages. And I can click into them and bring all of those apps back up to center view. It's very handy to be able to jump between them and it's a lot faster for me so far than using spaces. It's even more apparent on smaller screens. At my desk, I'm usually using one or two monitors, so like 30 some inches wide, and Stage Manager isn't as effective. But when I'm working mobile, just on a 13 inch MacBook Air, it makes a big deal of a difference. It's so much easier and faster to jump between apps, and I feel like I can make more use of my desktop. Before, if I had multiple windows open, it just felt very cluttered and things really stacked on top of one another but using center stage, it's much more organized and quicker and efficient to move between my applications. If I could just take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X by MacPaul. The Mac is a crucial tool for your work, your personal and your education life. And Clean My Mac X is an outstanding companion application to keep it running in tip top shape. It helps tune the Mac to run at maximum speed and prevents a Mac from cluttering, lagging, and slowing down. You can free up tons of space so your Mac never runs into an issue with storage. In total, Clean My Mac has nearly 50 built-in tools to keep your Mac clean, fast, and protected, all in a simple to use gorgeous interface. As an exclusive offer to you all, you can receive 5% off a year subscription to Clean My Mac. Use the link down below for 5% off, and this offer is only good until June 30th, so act now and get that discount. And just one more thing, Clean My Mac is designed and built by MacPaul, which is based in Ukraine, and despite all the ongoings in the country, there's been zero disruptions in their service. 
I cannot thank them enough for sponsoring this video and making it happen. If you haven't already, follow the link down below, get a discount, and try Clean My Mac X. Now, let's go back to our video. Another theme this year with macOS 13 Ventura is bringing more of iOS and iPadOS to the Mac. See, Apple has done a number of things that are pulled or inspired by Mac or iOS and iPadOS. For example, Apple has always used system preferences on the Mac. Longtime Mac users know this and might be tripped up because Apple has now switched things to system settings. And it makes a lot more sense, especially for the huge number of users that are coming from iOS and iPadOS, where Apple just has a settings app. And now Apple effectively does as well on the Mac. They can just open up settings, system settings, and have everything there. Not only did Apple change the name of system preferences, but system settings looks like it does on iOS and iPadOS. It has a menu down the left-hand side and a bunch more granular categories. Some things in macOS system preferences just didn't seem to flow quite right. Like if you wanted to set your wallpaper, you didn't go to the wallpaper section, you went to System Preferences, Desktop and Screen Saver, and then you could set your desktop. But it was never called Wallpaper, despite everybody calling it a wallpaper. With macOS 13 Ventura, Apple does have an actual dedicated wallpaper section of system settings. In a lot of ways, I think this makes just a whole lot more sense than System Preferences. Part of me feels sad to see System Preferences go because I've used it for so long, but it does make more sense and it's a little bit more easy to understand for new users switching to the platform. Another change is the addition of the Clock app. Apple never had a Clock app on macOS. So now there's an actual Clock app that looks just like it does on iOS and iPadOS and all the same functionality is in there. But they've made it work even better on macOS. So when I want to set a timer, it'll go ahead and pop it right there into the menu bar where I can see it. I can even completely quit the clock app and that timer will still be persistent up there in the menu bar. And when the timer goes off, even with the app closed, a notification will slide in and will be persistent and flash me until I manually dismiss it. It's really nice to be able to do. On top of that, you can set a timer just through Spotlight. Spotlight has a bunch of improvements this year, but I think my favorite is just to be able to start a timer through Spotlight. So I can just hit Command Spacebar, start a timer, boom, it takes mere seconds versus what I would have to do before use a third party application. You can also, again, do it with Siri. So Spotlight and Siri can now tap into those timers. Though I wish you could set multiple timers. Why can't you set multiple timers? I have no idea, but that is a feature that remains dedicated to Apple Watch and HomePod for some ungodly reason. Now, aside from the addition of the Clock app, Apple has also added the Weather app to macOS as well. There's a bunch of great stuff here. It's a glorious looking app. It looks very similar to iPad, but again, more macOS kind of touches to it. I love the ability to drag along a slider to scan for precipitation chances, and just overall is a great looking app. A ton of detail that you can dig into. I'm pretty happy with Apple's with Apple's acquisition of Dark Sky because they've really upped their weather game in the last few years. Other iOS kind of improvements here to macOS, Apple has a new share sheet. Apple has a new popover share sheet that looks just like it does on iOS and iPadOS. And I like it, I kind of like it. It's a different UI than you usually see on the Mac, but it totally works. The other big change, which is perfect for this COVID era, late COVID era that we're still kind of living in, but the biggest change is there's so many people working from home and using their webcams more than they ever did in the past. And no matter what, Apple's webcams are still subpar to dedicated cameras and other shooters. They just do not look the greatest. And if you were doing this all the time, you want something that's a better option. Apple now has the ability to use continuity camera which means you can use your iPhone's camera as your webcam on your Mac. And this frankly should have been a thing a long time ago. I don't know why it wasn't. And in fact, there are still third-party applications that already do this and they do it better. If you haven't, check out the Camo app. If you're like a pro user, it's great. There's so much more customization and options to it. It's amazing. 
But Apple has done a great job for your average daily user that requires no setup. Just have your iPhone and your Mac on the same Wi-Fi and signed into the same Apple ID and your camera will just pop up from your iPhone. Your Mac will discover your iPhone and use it as a camera in QuickTime, Zoom, FaceTime, all sorts of places like that just as another normal webcam. And has all these other cool benefits to it. For example, if you're using the ultra-wide lens, you can take advantage of center stage. It's got a very wide field of view and can keep you in frame no matter where you zig and zag on the camera. You can also use this neat desk view, which actually uses that camera to display the desk in front of you and a bunch of uh, machine learning artificial intelligence to rearrange that and adjust for the perspective to give you a view of what's in front of you. I can easily see demoing things using this, but right now Apple still seems to do some tinkering with it, but again, I'm not getting into how performance-based things are. At the moment, I do think things are gonna improve by the time that continuity camera in macOS Ventura is actually released. Still, it's incredible to use your iPhone as a webcam so easily, and I'm very excited for the new MagSafe accessories that are going to be launching to allow you to clip your camera directly to your Mac, to your studio display, whatever it is, and use it as a much better webcam. Seriously, it looks great, and the whole process just feels magical. If you've been paying attention to iOS and iPadOS, there's some other niceties that are found in those updates that are also present here in macOS as well. For example, there's new collaboration tools in Safari that I'm sure are gonna be really nice to people who are going to use them. Doesn't happen to be me, but I can see a advantage to those that do. Apple's also bringing pass keys to its devices, which is an effort to get rid of the password. And I think this is a great idea and I can't wait to have more people on board with this and more sites integrating it and just, the future is passwordless. We just need to figure out how to get there. And I think passkeys is a great step to actually do that. Apple's improved how you lock notes. It seems like a little thing, but before you'd have to have dedicated notes passwords. But now you can have an entire note locked with the face ID that you used to, or your touch ID that you used to get into your Mac. It makes sense. You can use Face ID on your iPhone, Touch ID on your Mac, but that same system, system password versus an app or note specific password like in the past. It's a nice thing that probably should have been here quite some time ago. I mentioned this in another video, but visual lookup on the Mac. It is so cool to be able to take a photo, drag something and just pull it into something else. I can take a dog playing Monopoly, just drag the dog right out of the photo and drop it into a message or a note or an email. And it's way faster than having to put that image into Pixelmator or into Photoshop or into Affinity Photo and have to select that object by myself. It's so cool that Visual Lookup can just do this right here on the Mac. Apple has a new home app on all of its platforms whole overhaul of the home app. Apple's going to be supporting Matter later this year. All great stuff for smart home users. And Apple's drastically fixed the Mail app. I always had issues with Search, but now Search is blazing fast and it can deal with like auto correction and very specific stuff. Apple's added other features that other third-party mail apps have had for years. You can now undo send within a certain period of time. You can now remind yourself to act on an email sometime in the future. It'll pop up and remind you again about it. You can add rich links into your documents that have things like thumbnails that look wonderful. I added stuff from like one article that I wrote. It drops in, has a thumbnail and a link. It just looks so much better than a boring all text URL. So yeah, Apple's done a lot of stuff with macOS Ventura. The thing is, as nice as macOS Ventura is, it isn't an overly visual overhaul. Apple is announcing a whole new look and feel to the system. Apple also isn't touting a bunch of new speed and performance improvements like the much beloved Snow Leopard. In fact, Apple's just bringing a lot more iOS and iPadOS style stuff to the Mac, which feels like a good thing. Apple's taking those things and making them more Mac specific and powerful. I still think Stage Manager is going to be a big deal for a lot of people, assuming they know how to use it by going into Control Center and toggling it on and back off again when they no longer want it. But there's a lot to love with macOS Ventura. I just hope people give it a chance and try it out. 
Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for macOS Ventura to release later this year? Let me be know below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have a lot more videos coming your way.